Uh, hello, uh, my name is Kyung Min. I'm uh, here today with my colleague Kelly to uh, present our recent work uh, called Clams and how we integrate our IIIF product into our uh, Clams platform. Uh, uh, as an outline, uh, we'll, we're going to talk about little about the uh, Clams and the uh, data format uh, MMIF we are using in the Clams platform and uh, how uh, their uh, institution, institutes can use CLANS for their own work. And then uh, Kelly will take from there and introduce some available apps and the integration with the IIIF uh, formats. Okay. So we start with this question, uh, what is CLANS? <laughs> So uh, with the recent technology, there are lots of uh, many uh, audiovisual digital libraries. And this work, uh, by the way, uh, we are at the Brandeis University and this work is a collaboration with uh, GBH, uh, funded by the Mellon uh, Foundation. And GBH is hosting a pretty large uh, audiovisual digital library called American, uh, American Archive of Public Broadcast. Uh, with thousands of videos and uh, radio shows and TV shows. So uh, they approached us to uh, start some, uh, to build some kind of platform to, uh, to provide some easy access to the AI and machine learning tools for, um, for them to uh, automatically or semi-automatically extract some uh, item level metadata to, for their cataloging process. So our goal here is to combine the uh, AI and machine learning tools with the uh, large scale AV digital libraries to uh, build a next generation smart archives. Uh, here is the schematic uh, summary of the climate platform. I'll briefly talk about each components here. So first we have this uh, app directory, which is uh, currently work in progress. So uh, with the uh, app directory, developers can uh, write their uh, AI ML tools and easily publish uh, tool or app to the app directory so that users can easily download the app and use it uh, with their own Clams instance. So Clams instance will uh, come with a portable workflow engine. We'll talk a little more about that later. Uh, and that uh, provides some user-friendly interface to access these uh, AI tools and create their uh, own workflow and run them. So in the middle, we have this uh, MIF. Uh, uh, we have inter interchange format uh, that enables interoperable interoperable interoperation between different apps and the uh, workflow. Uh, so we first, I'll uh, briefly talk about that because that uh, needs some detailed uh, description. So uh, MIF is the multimedia interchange format and that uh, which is the core component that uh, basically uh, makes every apps and uh, every actors in the platform talks the same language. So uh, yeah. Uh, Okay, so in the uh, MIF, we because we are uh, handling with uh, handling uh, audiovisual data and text data at the same time, so we provide these uh, four different types of annotation anchor mechanism, uh, which is based on uh, characters or reason or time-based uh, annotations. There are basic types, and there's another component <coughs> anchor type called uh, 3D bounding box. Uh, that's basically uh, some kind of bounding box or region polygons over uh, time. <coughs> so MIF is, uh, the file format is basically just JSON uh, with some JSON-LD components. I'll show you some examples of the MIF. So this is the example of character-based uh, annotation, which is named entity. Uh, so for each in annotation, annotation object, we have this, uh, add type and those add types are resolved to some uh, web repos uh, web uh, registry of the concepts and we have this uh, all the properties included in JSON format. Also goes for the uh, image annotations and some audio or video time-based annotations. And um, 
Yep. So in general, uh, AI and ML practice uh, want to do one thing, but we want a myth to have these bridging annotations so that uh, the, uh, the multi multi-dimensional data source, uh, we can look at the multi-dimensional data source at the, uh, all together uh, to provide some uh, comprehensive information uh, so that the archives can provide some more interactive presentations and maybe researchers can uh, use the data uh, to train their AI, additional AI tools uh, using some multi-sensory learning uh, process. Uh, we also encode source data in the MIF uh, as a file pointer. And for reproducibility, uh, we keep all the timestamps and version uh, numbers in within the MIF format. Uh, so everyone can try to do the same workflow in the, uh, and get the same result. So this is a uh, somewhat detailed, uh, but still uh, at the summary level, schema for the uh, one single clamps instance. So each uh, archive will have their own local uh, storage and uh, clamps instance will have this uh, container orchestration system. So everything currently is using Docker to be deployed. And, and once everything is processed through the apps, uh, users can oops, users can convert uh, the data format on their own to their own format and publish it to their uh, metadata repository. So here's one sim simple uh, example uh, workflow uh, that takes uh, some video and audio and text input and generate uh, timed labels of faces and names. And for that, we are currently using two, uh, we are developing two types of uh, workflow engines. One is uh, based on web uh, that provides GUI uh, called Galaxy. And the other is uh, written in Python and running one on uh, Bash or any uh, Linux uh, or Unix uh, terminal uh, that is more uh, suitable for batch processing and for those users who are more familiar with the terminal uh, UI. Yeah, from here, I'll, yeah, this is the uh, screenshot of the Galaxy GUI uh, to type different uh, clamps tools to generate a uh, custom workflow. And this is an example of the, uh, the terminal-based uh, pipeline engine. We, on the left, we have a simple configuration file and on the right, uh, we can simply start the Python script and run it in a uh, in the background. Okay, I'll leave the stage to Kelly <laughs> from here. Thank you, Kay. Um, now I'm going to talk a little about some different clams producers and consumers. Um, so clams producers are tools that produce some sort of annotation. So they're taking in an input, uh, an MF input and adding something to it and generating an MF. And consumers are tools that take an MF as input and do something with it. So that could mean converting it to PB core or generating a triple IF manifest and then displaying it within the universal viewer, which is one example we're gonna show. Okay, so some producers that we currently have been working with um, for video are uh, and for images, character recognition, um, so OCR with Tesseract, Slate detection and recognition. Um, I'll go a little bit more into that one. Shot and scene detection um, for audio, speech to text using Caldi, uh, speech segmentation, so annotating um, audio streams with some time frames showing when there's speech versus non speech versus applause. And text-based producers include named entity recognition and named entity linking, which is like grounding to an authority file. So the first app I'm gonna talk about is the Slate Text Extraction. 
Um, so here's some examples of slates. Um, yeah, actually, I'm going to start with slate extraction. So ignore the, the text here in the, the header. So these are some slates. Um, these are frames from videos that have some textual information that we could extract and put into some metadata storage. Um, so the motivation for this is probably clear. We want to find those frames, extract the content from the frames, and then use those to populate some archive management system. Um, so we developed this tool by working with archivists from GBH, and they annotated, manually annotated some videos with the start and end times for when, um, when slates start and ended, then we extracted those frames and trained a model um, to differentiate between slate and non-slate frames. Okay, the next tool is slate text extraction, um, which is another model that we trained for, for detecting the actual location of text within a frame. So for those frames that we showed um, with text in them, we annotated them with, by drawing boxes and transcribing the text. So here's an example of this, the, the via annotation environment that we used. Okay, and here's some just information about the model that we trained. Um, finally, Tesseract is the final um, tool in the pipeline that we're going to talk about now. Um, so Tesseract is an OCR engine, so input an image and get out information about where in the image there's text and transcription of that text. Um, skip this slide. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the process of converting MIF to IIIF. And do that by showing some examples. So for time frames, um, such as slates or bars and tones, just another tool that didn't go into detail about. Um, in MIF, we have annotations field and it's a list. And here we have a time frame annotation with start and end frame numbers. And then within IIIF, we convert that to a, a range annotation. Um, and for each of the documents, we have a separate canvas. And then for each of the annotations, we generate annotations that link to the corresponding canvas. And then for bounding boxes, um, within MMIF, we have bounding box annotations that include the coordinates, um, we also have text document annotation. So this is where we have the transcription of the text. So this is the, the output from running Tesseract. And then we also have an alignment annotation, which links the, the box location to the box contents. And in converting this to IIIF, we generate an annotation list, um, so external from the, the like core manifest. And then within that annotation list for each bounding box, we generate an annotation with the characters displayed. Okay, so using these IIIF manifests that we generated from MMIF files, um, we have been experimenting with displaying the results in the Universal Viewer. So here's one screenshot example of that. And this is a, a slate frame that has been converted to manifest and includes bounding box annotations. Um, so here we have a, a search service included, the universal viewer and searched for the word prime. And it's found you know, the word prime in the first and second frame. It should be highlighted, but having an issue getting that to, to work. Um, and then here's another example in the universal viewer of a video with time frame annotations that were converted to ranges. And then the, the range is displayed here on the timeline. And if this were 
you know, actually a live demo, we could click on the slate and it would jump forward to show where in the video there's a slate. So I think, let's see, yep, yeah, that, that's it. Um, yeah, thank you for listening and I'm happy to take any questions. So there's one question already on Whova, uh, and it is, uh, is MMIF specific to clams? Uh, well, we developed um, MMIF as a part of the clams, but the, the format itself is very general. It's just a JSON with some LD uh, linked data components. So uh, it doesn't have to be bound to the any clams uh, specific tools or platform, so anyone can use it. Um, they found a uh, use, yeah, any use case for their needs. Yeah. Are there any other questions or folks? We'll give you a, a moment to type. Okay, one other question. Were you inspired by existing workflow engines? Uh, yes. So uh, at the beginning of the project, we looked at existing workflow engines, uh, including um, Miko and other uh, uh, like audiovisual media specific uh, projects. Uh, prior projects that worked on the similar uh, goals. And we ended up using Galaxy, uh, which is a workflow engine developed in the bioinformation community uh, as our uh, base, <laughs> because it actually, uh, quite, it's actually quite flexible uh, and easy to adopt uh, for our purpose and also provides a really user-friendly interface for any non-tech savvy users. We also have previous work on a similar workflow pipelining project at Brandeis um, called the Lapse Grid um, that's doing similar work, but just for pure text documents. Um, so this kind of in inherited a lot of what we used in Laps. Okay, and uh, we're just about at time, but maybe if there's one other question, maybe we could answer it really quickly. Um, it's, uh, do you have any thoughts of how this might map to 3D? Okay, that's a good question. So uh, we started the whole project with uh, uh, GBH's collection, which is uh, completely 2D videos. So we haven't had a chance to actually think about how do we apply the same concepts of uh, annotation anchors to the 3D objects or maybe three-dimensional computational objects uh, such as mesh or blend. So actually, yeah, at the moment we don't uh, have a good answer for that question, to be honest, but it, it'll be a very interesting uh, problem to tackle maybe in the future. Great, thank you all so much. This was a wonderful presentation. Um, thank you to Kelly and Kyungmin, um, and thank you to everyone who joined us for the call today. Just a reminder that we'll be making a recording available um, in the weeks after the conference. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Um, and again, thanks all, and we will see you at the next session. Thank you. Thank you. Bye everyone. Bye.